Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 5 of MomCast. So, in this episode, I'm going to be a little more structured than normal. Oh my gosh, my kid's playing with toys. Um, I'm going to be a little more structured than normal. Um, today, I'm going to talk about feeding, whether you feed from the breast or you feed from a bottle, and how to maintain your milk supply if you're breastfeeding, and if you're not breastfeeding and you're bottle feeding, basically just certain things to look out for. So first off with breastfeeding, from the get-go in the hospital, you want them to check to see if they have ties. So some places might be able to tell you if your child has some tongue ties, lip ties, cheek ties, or not. Um, The lactation consultant at my hospital had a semi-clue. She kept saying, your child's not latching properly. I think she has ties. I went to a different lactation consultant, and that one actually diagnosed my child with tongue ties. She had a posterior tongue tie. She had two cheek ties and a lip tie that we had to have cut. So, first and foremost, you got to make sure your latch is good. So if you're planning on breastfeeding, make sure you get with the lactation consultant and there are no questions before you leave the hospital. And I don't want to make a video personally. I will find the references that my LC gave me for how to properly get them to latch onto your boob. Um, And I will post them for you because I don't feel comfortable posting my boob on camera. And plus, my child has teeth now, and I am not about to put my boob in her mouth. (laughs) Um, So, while breastfeeding, it is important to keep your supply up that after each time you feed, you pump. So... Come here. Come here. It's okay somebody's getting cranky so now with that being said you're supposed to feed 15 minutes each side and then pump for 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes after each feeding session so that would put you on a very good track and it had me on a very very good supply track there for a long time until like the latching issue was causing clogs in my um, ducts and I couldn't express all the milk that I needed. Which brings me to how to unclog ducts. You're going to want to get a haka and in the haka you're going to fill it with warm water and a tablespoon of Epsom salt. You're going to let your nipple rest in that water for about five to ten minutes and then putting the suction on and let the haka draw that clog out into the nice warm Epsom salt water and that that helps a lot with relieving clogs it helped a lot with mine um also um massaging in hot water or putting hot towels on your chest not like burning hot, but for me, I like to shower in lava, so burning hot in my case. Um, That helps keep clogs down. Hand expressing, if your boobs still feel hard after you have um, pumped and you have fed, that's when you need to go through and hand express and try to get all the hardness to go away because that can cause clogs as well. Um, so if your supply is not the best, which it happens, it happens to the best of us, that happened to me because of the latch issues. Oh my goodness, you are such a squiggle worm today. Um, and you have to supplement. The nighttime feedings are the best time to supplement because that means she's going to sleep longer. Yes. That happened with you. 
If you supplement your nighttime feedings, the baby will definitely sleep longer. Now that brings me to the formula feedings. So if you have to formula feeding, feed your baby or you're starting straight off with formula, just know if your baby is passing chunks in their stool, that is not normal. What is that? That is called the baby is not digesting the formula. It is not processing in their tummy very well. They're not getting all the vitamins and nutrients that they should be getting. Anybody who says that it is normal, it is not. My pediatrician said that it's her not digesting that formula. So what we needed to do was switch her formulas. She was on Similac Sensitive whenever we had to start supplementing, but it was causing constipation and all kinds of other issues, such as the chunks and everything. So finally, we switched to the Nutramagen Hypoallergenic which we had to switch so many different formulas and try so many different things. And now that she's older, she's about, well, she is seven months now. She's seven months now and she can finally have normal cow-based formulas. So now when she goes to the bathroom, it looks normal, even though, you know... <laughs> Now she's baby led weaning, but we're not going to talk about baby led weaning today. That's for the next episode. So, with your feedings, for the first month, it's supposed to be two ounces every two hours. Um, by months two and three, it's supposed to be like three ounces every two hours. And then by four months, it's supposed to be five to six ounces every three to four hours. So, every baby is different. If your baby is taking more right off the bat, please don't feel alarmed. That is what the baby wants. And as my pediatrician has said, if the baby's hungry, they will eat. If the baby's not hungry, they will not eat. My child, whenever she is hungry, she will eat. And then... If she's not hungry, she presses her mouth shut so tight that you can't even get a spoon in it. So, it's honestly, it's a comforting fact to know that you can't overfeed your child exactly. Because they will tell you when they're hungry. They will stop. Um, oh gosh, what else? That's basically everything I had written down. <laughs> um, yes. So, <laughs> just ensure that if you're doing formula, you're making sure it's something that's easy on the baby's tummy. That could also be causing colic for a lot of babies or colicky symptoms. If you find that your baby's super gassy or having a lot of stomach issues and discomfort... One, if the Mylocon or the gripe water isn't working, it's definitely what you're feeding her. And mamas, if you have to go lactose-free, it takes about seven weeks for that stuff to clear out of your system. Um, my suggestion, if you really like cow's milk, you have to take two tablets of Protease a day. That's what I had to do because I kind of refuse to give up all milk products. So you can either take two tablets of Protease a day or the next best thing that semi tastes like cow's milk would either be oat milk or I liked coconut milk. Um, so those are some good options for you. I would definitely stick to those. Sorry if you hear the wrestling of me trying to keep the computer away from the little one, but that's all the time I have. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And I gotta go defuse somebody who's ready for a nap. This is MomCast signing off. Have a good one.